The Melba Story. The story of Australia's most famous woman. The true story, fully authenticated, and featuring another wonderful Australian singer, Glenda Raymond. The Melba Story. In 1888, Melba left London, vowing that she'd never return. Her teacher, Madame Marchese, was furious and warned her that her prospects for the immediate future were almost hopeless. I think you had better give up singing altogether, Nelly. You have ruined all your chances of success. You have spoiled all my plans. You had better go back to Australia. Marchese, darling old Marchese, you don't mean that. Of course I mean it. What is there for a girl who turns her back on two managements? But I didn't. You left Brussels in disgrace. In disgrace? Oh, no, I simply... You simply told the management that you would not finish the season. You said you preferred to sing in London. Well, that was true. I just wanted to... And what happens when you reach London? You find that you are not as big a success as you had hoped. And so you get on your high horse again. And if you in your position, I would have acted very differently, I assure you. I would have taken notice of those who knew more than I did. I would have asked the advice of people who were experienced in these matters. But you couldn't expect me to... Be quiet. I wash my hands off you. We are finished, you and I. Finished? Oh, no, don't say that, please. Oh, please, Marchese. Tears will not help you now. I know, but I can't help it. I'm so unhappy. Nelly. Oh, Nelly, <laughs> don't cry like that, child. Oh, my keys. There, there. Perhaps all is not yet lost. You, you, you'll help me. Only if you promise to do as I tell you. No more of this headstrong conduct. You need guidance, Nelly. You need a manager. Will you be my manager, Marchese? You agree to obey me? Oh, yes. I shall take you tomorrow to see Leclerc of the Paris Opera. It was very good of you to come along and see me, Madame Milbert. Not at all, Mr. Leclerc. I happened to be in Paris, and after what Madame Marchese told me, I thought it was only courtesy to return your call. Madame Milba is considering several offers at the moment. She has been asked to return to London. I understood that Madame's London season was somewhat disappointing. Nothing of the kind. It was a triumph. Although I was singing an unfamiliar role. Yes, yes, I understand. And are you going to let me hear your voice this morning? I did bring a few songs with me. The supreme pleasure of hearing this beautiful voice. Madame Melba is not in the habit of giving auditions. Let us say that she and I must learn to know each other. She as a singer, I as a manager. You agree, madame? Well, yes. Good. Let us begin then. Um, Nelly? I'll sing Aditi's Ecstasy Waltz. Very well. When you're ready, madame. All right, my dear. Ah, now we begin. Thank you. 
She can do justice to the part of Ophelia. I am sure Madame Elbe will be very successful. Shall we say that the first performance of Hamlet will take place on April the 18th? theatre these last two weeks, Nelly. Nothing, madame. No rehearsals? Not so far. Hmm, I thought as much. Something will have to be done about this. But everything's arranged for the 18th, isn't it? It is by no means arranged. I find the attitude of the directors most unsatisfactory. How? First, the question of a contract. They say they will sign nothing until after your debut. But why? Ah, these cunning gentlemen wait to find which way the wind blows. If you are a success, then they will be ready to talk business. If not, well, they will have nothing to lose. But, madame, such an arrangement may prove to be in our favor. How do you mean, child? Well, suppose I make a big success. What then? I can demand a bigger fee than ever. <laughs> <laughs> you have become a businesswoman, Nelly. Uh, but I have found it is always better to have a signed contract in advance. I think we had better go and have a little talk with the directors. We regret, ladies, that the performance of Hamlet cannot take place on the date arranged. Uh, Madame Richard is still indisposed. And you have no one to take her place? It would be unthinkable to produce Hamlet at the Paris Opera without Madame Richard playing the Queen. What will happen when she dies? Will Hamlet die also? Madame jokes. No, no. I am quite serious. But let us leave the subject of Madame Richard for the moment and turn to something more important. What is that, Madame Marquise? The question of Madame Melba's contract. I have already explained that we prefer to leave that until after the first performance. Why, Mr. Leclerc? It is the usual custom with a, a new singer. I see. However, supposing that a contract were signed now, what salary would you ask? I'd be content with uh, 4,000 francs a month. 4,000 francs? Uh, to begin with, of course. It could be increased later. But you are only a beginner. You still prefer to wait until after my debut? Most certainly. Very well. But you may regret the delay, Mr. Leclerc. We shall risk that, madame. And when is the first performance of Hamlet to take place? When we are ready, madame Marchese. Not before. I do not like this delay, Nelly. There is some reason I do not understand. Never mind, madame. We can wait. And in the meantime, I have something to show you. Another letter from Lady de Grey. Oh, she still wishes you to go back to London. Mm -hmm. She is more insistent than ever. Listen to this. I did not tell you in my first letter that one of those who are most anxious for your return is the Princess of Wales. Ah, yes, the Princess Alexandra from Denmark. Mm -hmm. She was present at your performance of Rigoletto and was deeply impressed by your singing. 
I know that things were badly arranged before, but if you come back, I promise you it will be very different this time. You will be under my care, and I shall see that you lack neither friends nor hospitality. Well? No. I shall never sing in London again. Who can this be? Yes? Madame Melder? Yes? I have been waiting for you to come and see me. But since you have not done so, I conclude that you are not aware of certain matters. Who are you? Professor Erard. I am a teacher of dramatic art. You must have heard of me. No, I don't think I have. Nilly, who is this? Uh, Professor Erard. Do you know him? Oh, yes. I know him very well. Good evening, Professor. I had not expected to see you here, Madame Marchese. I am sure you had not. Who is this man, Madame? He is a vampire who drinks the life blood of young singers. Be careful what you say. For years, Nelly, this man has terrorized students into taking lessons from him. How? By threatening to use his influence against them. It has been said that no one has ever yet been successful at the Paris Opera without the aid of this so-called Professor. Do you hear that, Madame Melba? Remember it. You mean, I must also take lessons? If you are wise, yes. I can teach you much, my dear. That may be, but I won't be coerced into anything. I'll take my lessons from whom I like, when I like, and how I like. Bravo, Nettie, bravo. Very well, madame. But you must know that you have now ruined yourself. For I tell you that you will never, never appear at the Paris Opera. In a moment, we'll return to the Melba story. The Melba story. to tell me, Professor Erard, that you'll prevent my appearing at the Paris Opera? Yes. And your friend, Madame Marchese, will tell you that I make no idle boast. He has influence, Nelly. Very great influence. But whether he can use it against you at this stage... You will see whether I can or not. But the directors have heard me and invited me to sing. I'm to appear as Ophelia in Hamlet. When? On the... On a date to be arranged. It was to have been the 18th. But now the date has been changed, eh? In fact, there is now no date at all. Am I right? So that's the reason for the delay. Silly girl. Why do you keep opposing me? When will you realize that I and only I can help you? Please go, Professor Erard. You know what you are doing? Yes. And I still want you to go. Very well. But you will be sorry for this, I promise you. I am proud of you, Nilly, but I am afraid for you as well. How can he do me any harm? Mm, in many ways. Sly hints that you are unsuitable for this reason, nor for that. Pressure used on one director, appeals made to another. There is a technique in these matters, as I know, only too well. Then I think we had better forestall this gentleman. How? By applying a little pressure ourselves. Come, madame. We'll pay a call on Mr. Leclerc. I am desolated to inform you, ladies, that the opening performance of Hamlet must still be further postponed. Why? Is Madame Richard still indisposed? No, fortunately she has recovered. But Larcel, our leading baritone, has been taken ill. Then you must find someone else, Mr. Leclerc. What did you say? I said you must find someone else. But Larcel sings the title role. He is the only baritone in Paris who could sing Hamlet. How do you know? A bigger pardon? Have you tried to find someone else? Well, no. And let me point out to you, madame, that it would be greatly in your disadvantage to appear with a man who knows as little about the opera as you do. I'm prepared to put up with even that, rather than postpone my Paris debut one more night. I beg of you, madame. And here's something else I want you to know. You may tell Professor Erard that I refuse to be 
blackmailed into paying him for the right to appear on this stage. Tell him also that any further threats on this subject will be reported to the press. The press? Who will be glad to expose the tyranny of interested hirelings living on misrepresentation and vicious practice. Now, Mr. LeClaire, when do I make my debut? Uh, would... Would a May the Eighth suit you? Oh. 
Listen, madame. You are an undoubted success. I'll talk to you in the morning, Mr. Leclerc. Good morning, ladies. Please be seated. Take this chair, Madame Melba. I'm sure it is the most comfortable. In that case, Mr. Leclerc, we'll give it to Madame Marchese. Thank you, Nelly. Yes, yes, of course. Whatever you like. And now then, let me see. The contract is here, I think. Ah, oh, yes. Here it is. And you sign just there. I didn't ask for a contract. Oh, yes, Madame. It was your own suggestion. I remember that you asked for the amount stated. 4,000 francs a month. And you thought it was too much. Oh, you understand these things, Madame Marchese. It was a large fee for an unknown singer. But now... Now you're willing to pay me 4,000 francs. I have talked it over with the other directors. And we have agreed that although the fee is a large one, we shall not try to reduce the amount. And so, as we see, we have the contract all prepared. Yes. And now you can tear it up, Mr. Leclerc. What? You had your opportunity and you rejected it. A few days ago you could have secured my services for 4,000 francs a month. But you preferred to wait. To see which way the wind blew. I am a man of business, madame. Of course. But as it happens, the wind blows my way. And your caution is going to cost you 2,000 francs a month. You mean... If you want me now, my friend, you must pay me 6,000 francs. Oh, impossible. Come, Nelly. We are wasting our time. Oh, uh, uh, no, wait. I beg of you to be reasonable. We cannot afford to pay so much. Madrid and Berlin have offered more. And another management in Paris has also volunteered a better contract. But money is not everything. I prefer to stay on at the Paris Opera, even though I make a financial sacrifice. A financial sacrifice? A 6,000 francs a month? Certainly. Oh, madame. You take my breath away. We also take ourselves away. Come, Nelly. Oh, no, wait. You agree to our terms? I, 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 Excuse I... me, sir. Well, well, what is it? Can you not see I am busy? I am sorry, sir, but there is a lady outside. A lady? Well, tell her to wait. This is no time for social calls. This is an English lady, sir. And she says she wishes to speak to Madame Melba. To me? Who is this lady? Lady de Grey, madame. She's the one who's been writing to me. Ask her to wait, please. Tell her I am very busy. Say that uh, Madame Melba is engaged. Uh, but I think I'd like to talk to Lady de Grey. Later, madame. After we have concluded our business. Look, here is the contract. Uh, for 4,000 francs a month. Ah, that is easily altered. A stroke of the pen. So, uh, we change the four to uh, six. Oh. You do agree, then? I suppose I must. What do you think, madame? Shall I wait until I've spoken to Lady de Grey? Mm, perhaps it would be wiser. She is undoubtedly here to make you a bigger offer for London. Uh, madame, I beg of you. You beg of me to accept 6,000 francs a month? Oh, I do, I do. If you wish, I will go down on my knees. <laughs> No, Mr. Leclerc, that won't be necessary. Please, give me the pen. Oh, here it is. Nelly. Melba. Melba triumphs, not only as a singer, but also as a businesswoman. For now she knows that the time has come when she can make her own terms. Brussels has been conquered, Paris has fallen, and ahead lies London. But for a second assault on that great city, we must wait for the next chapter of The Melba Story.
The Melba story was written by John Ormiston Reed and produced by Dorothy Crawford. The Australian Symphony Orchestra was conducted by Hector Crawford. The role of Melba was spoken by Patricia Kennedy and sung by the Australian coloratura soprano, Glenda Raymond.